In this House of Logic video, we're going to have a look at using the Proxmox API with Python. Now, there's already another video that I've recorded about this um, where we go through the process using uh, both Postman and PowerShell. And this is, uh, this is just to show that you can do the same thing in Python, basically. So if we go into the uh, the user setup, first of all, um, you can see that we have a user2 here, which we've used in the other video. And we've also created an API token for user2 uh, that can be used for, uh, for our purposes. Uh, so what we've got in terms of um, the script, so this is almost a direct rewrite of the um, of the script um, done in PowerShell and the process that we followed um, through um, the um, the postman process um, is we're initially in the script we're doing a bunch of, um, of command line argument handling um, and we then pass the values um, that we pull out of the arguments through as parameters into the main function which then passes those through into a, a function that I've called proxmox connect uh, technically I didn't really need to have another function but I decided to go with that approach in case I want to add anything else to the script um, so the arguments that we pull in are the host, uh, the username and the password, and the node name and the VM ID. So what happens in the script, if I talk you through it and then demonstrate it afterwards, is that we um, we take the Proxmox host and using that we go and get a ticket um, using a um, XWW form URL encoded uh, body, excuse me, which we um, which we send through using a post. Um, to the uh, JSON access ticket endpoint and from that um, response if it works then we um, we actually take out um, the uh, the ticket value and the uh, CSRF prevention token which we then use in our subsequent calls um, and those calls then include the CF CSRF prevention token as part of the API headers and we add the um, PVE um, auth uh, cookie value which is the ticket um, in as the cookie on the session and then we make the rest of the calls so the first thing that we're doing as part of the script is to go and get the proxmox version um, and then um, as part of that we could we could actually just exit from the script if we we so wanted to and just leave it there um, but then the next section is actually to uh, then make a call to a particular node name as specified and a vm id and we get the current status of vm uh, the vm um, id 100 in our um, default value what we'll be passing through as well um, and then based on that we then take some other action so if the vm is running we actually do nothing so vm running no action to take if it's not running um, if it's paused then we go and um, set the base uri of the next api call to resume uh, however, if it's stopped, then um, we will go and um, access the start endpoint. And both of those are post calls, uh, just to slightly different endpoints, and they have the same body, so we're able to reuse the code there. And then off the back of that, we're taking the API response codes, and we will print out the actual, um, the basically the, I think the, the job ID, effectively, um, that runs on Proxmox. So if I now open up my um, my PowerShell window where I'm running Python from, I know, I know, I'm a bit PowerShell fixated, some might say. Um, what we've got is py.exe um, with um, the actual Python script. We're feeding in the Proxmox host, the username, the password, the node name, and the node ID. So if I hit enter here, it will tell us what it's doing. And if I show you quickly on screen what it's actually doing on the host. So at the moment, it is in a paused state on Py desktop VMID 100. So if we run that, it should tell us the version of Proxmox and it should tell us um, that it is in a paused state. There we go. And that it has gone with a QM resume task there. And it has, there we go, it's saying that it's resuming. And then if we run that script again, what it will show us, so once it's up and running, is that there is nothing for it to do because the VM is already in a running state. So state says running and VM says running, no action to take. And that's it. That's um, that's just a little add-on um, in relation to using the API, uh, but this time with Python, just to so show that it can be done. I'll share the script um, via the blog GitHub page and link to that within um, the description for this video. So that's it. Nice, short and sweet. Um, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if that's your kind of thing. Um, otherwise, we will catch you next time. Thanks very much. Bye now.